In September 2012, the world population was estimated by the United States Census Bureau to be 7.036 billion. The U.S. Census Bureau estimates the 7 billion number was surpassed on 12 March 2012. According to a separate estimate by the United Nations, Earth's population exceeded 7 billion in October 2011, a milestone that offers unprecedented challenges and opportunities to all of humanity. Blaming environmental problems on overpopulation scapegoats the poorest people in the world, who are least responsible for carbon emissions. The richest fifth consume 66 times more resources than the poorest fifth. The Malthusian motive, the will to control the population of the poor rather than the consumption of the rich, the desire to eliminate poverty by reducing the numbers of the poor rather than the inequalities of society is wrong. If we claim that there are too many people on the earth, then why are we so sure that we are not the excess ones, we Westerners who individually consume and pollute as much as 50 or more African or Indian peasants? In all my years in the field of population, I have never one single time heard a member of the population establishment say that there were too many upper middle class white Anglo-Saxon Protestants in the world. There are many ways you can classify pollution. It can be chemical, radioactive, or simply the presence of improperly disposed waste products. While some places, like Mexico City, have a very obvious problem with their heavy smog, the much more serene looking Lake Karashe in Russia would have you dead within an hour of sitting on its banks due to heavy radioactive contamination. So, whether the pollution is visible or not, these are some of the most polluted places on Earth. The small land in town of La Arroya has been home to a metal smelter run by Missouri-based Doe Run Corporation since 1922. As a result nearly all the local children suffer from lead poisoning and respiratory complications. The Peruvian government has even been taken to court for crimes against humanity by various organizations. One of the world's most polluted rivers, over 5 million people reside in its basin and rely on it as their primary water supply. After years of mining and processing both cadmium and lead are very common in the hills surrounding this Zambian city. In fact, the children here have been found to have 10 times the permissible upper level of lead in their bloodstream. Moreover, the ground is barren and nothing will grow as a result of the contamination. This Siberian city houses an even larger smelting complex than La Arroya, it's actually the largest in the world. Not surprisingly, the pollution here is so bad that the average life expectancy is up to 10 years less than the rest of Russia. With upwards of a dozen mines operating in the regions without any significant level of regulation, the this Indian city has been listed as one of the most polluted in the world by the Blacksmith Institute. As one of the largest dumps of radioactive waste in all of Asia, Milusu is not only heavily contaminated but there are a series of unstable uranium tailing pits in the hills surrounding the city. Were these pits were to empty the result would be disastrous. Almost synonymous with pollution, the banks of the Riaguelo Basin in Argentina are lined by nearly 4,000 factories, 42 garbage dumps, and 13 slums. Definitely not a good combination when it comes to health and life expectancy. The fact that it is located in a volcanic crater surrounded by mountains only compounds Mexico City's already troublesome pollution problem by trapping a thick layer of smog that hover over the city. Whenever you cram 150 million people into an area the size of Bangladesh you are bound to have some waste management issues.
Not only has the country as a whole been significantly destroyed by natural disasters and deforestation, but on top of all that it has on its hands a severe waste management crisis. With a rapidly growing population, Dar es Salaam's already strained water supply is only going to worsen. Moreover, as solid wastes continues to empty into the Mzimbazi River, the prevalence of infectious disease will continue to increase. As the largest tributary of the Ganges, scientists estimate that roughly 60% of Delhi's waste gets dumped into the river. This doesn't change the fact that almost all of its residents rely on it for water and bathing as well. Situated at the end of an extensive line of industrial complexes that stretch for hundreds of miles upriver, the level of mercury in Ptis water supply is 96 times higher than anything considered safe. Named the world's most chemically polluted city by the Guinness Book of World Records, in recent years its death rate has overwhelmed its birth rate by more than 260 percent. It also has one of the lowest life expectancies in the world at roughly 45 years. As a result of updated regulations, the 40 or so industrial complexes in the region have managed to create a severely toxic environment that has led to numerous health complications for residents. Accounting for over half of China's lead production, this city is home to some of the worst cases of lead poisoning in the world. Used for years as nuclear dumping site by the Soviet Union, Lake Karashe has several times been declared the most polluted place on Earth. In fact, it has been said that just one hour of exposure here would be lethal. The site of the worst nuclear accident in history, after the Shunbul disaster in 1986 almost all of this town's 14,000 residents moved away. Today it remains for the most part uninhabited due to radiation and fallout. It has been said that if you hang your laundry out here, it will be black before it can even dry. Although Linfen was long considered the world's most polluted city, small improvements have been made in recent years. According to the World Health Organization of A's, Iran is now the most polluted city in the world, a problem that is only made worse by its constant dust storms. The shrinking of the Aral Sea has been called one of the planet's worst environment.
In 1989, the old town of Samoseta, Samsat, capital of the ancient Komajung kingdom located in Ajiman province was flooded behind the Atatuk Dam. A new town with the same name Samsat was founded for the around 2,000 people dislocated. About 90% of uprate's total annual flow originates in Turkey, while the remaining part is added in Syria, but nothing is contributed further downstream in Iraq. The Atatürk Dam has cut the flow from the Euphrates by about a third. Syria and Iraq claim to be suffering severe water shortages due to this development. Egypt's Toshka lakes were created in the 1980s and 1990s by the diversion of water from Lake Nasser through a man-made canal into the Sahara Desert. Flooding of the Toshka Depression created four main lakes with a maximum surface area of about 1,450 square kilometers, around 25 billion cubic meters of water. By 2006, the amount of stored water was reduced by 50 percent. In June 2012, water filled only the lowest parts of the main western and eastern basins, representing a surface area of 307 square kilometers or roughly 80% smaller than in 2002. Water is almost completely absent from the central basin. The soil in the immediate catchments of the Chalor Dam has not been stabilized, so the reservoir may be silting up. Silt is also being deposited in the Chalor River, affecting the intake structures of Cano City water supply. The dam has disrupted the natural balance along the river. Upstream areas are now subject to flooding while downstream riverine wetlands and croplands have dried out. A 2002 study noted that while the dam was intended to support irrigation projects, none had been started, although much farmland had been covered by the dam. The water was being used only to supply Cano City. For five millennia, the Hamoun wetlands, located on the border of Afghanistan and Iran, stood as a major source of food and shelter for the people of Central Asia. Fed by the Helmand River, the 2,000 square kilometer wetlands formed a true oasis in the middle of hundreds of kilometers of arid plains. By the turn of the 21st century, however, these wetlands were desiccated by irrigation and drought. In mid-May 2008, a dust storm arose from dry lake beds left behind by the once moist wetlands. Since the economic reforms in 1979, China has seen many changes. Several towns have grown explosively. Amongst these is the capital, Beijing, which has developed in all directions and reached in 2000 a population of 13 million people. The 2010 census revealed that the total population in Beijing had reached 19.6 million. Shanghai is the largest city by population in China and the largest city proper by population in the world. It is one of China's four province-level municipalities, with a total population in 2010 of over 23 million. The Greater Pearl River Delta area in southeastern China is the world's largest mega-region with a population of approximately 120 million people. Over the past two decades, the populations of the Delta cities of Gangzhou and Shenzhen have each reached nearly 10 million people, while Hong Kong, Foshan and Dongan have each grown to around 5 million. The individual cities are beginning to merge into one contiguous urban area. The core delta area shown here had a little over 20 million people in the early 1990s but has since tripled to roughly 60 million people. China's Yellow River, or Wanghe, is the world's muddiest. Stretching some 5,475 kilometers from eastern Tibet to Bohai, the river travels through soft plateaus of silt, picking up a massive sediment load on its journey. The river derives its yellow color from fine particles of mica, quartz, and feldspar. 
Besides coloring the river yellow, the sediments have reshaped the coast. Iran's capital ranks among the world's fast-growing cities. In the early 1940s, Tehran's population was about 700,000. By 1966, it had risen to 3 million, and by 1986, during the Iran-Iraq war, migrants brought the population to 6 million. Today, the metropolitan area has more than 10 million residents, more than the sum of the country's next five major metropolitan areas combined. This explosive growth has environmental and public health consequences, including air and water pollution and the loss of arable land. A small fence separates densely populated Tijuana, Mexico, from the United States in the border patrol as San Diego sector. The construction of a secondary fence is underway. The Mexico City metropolitan area occupies an area of 7,854 km squared, with 1,500 km squared completely urbanized. With just over 19 million inhabitants it is among the most populous cities in the world. The Distrito Federal with a population density of 5,799 persons per kilometer squared in 2000 and a total population of nearly 9 million is the capital city and the economic and political center of the country. The urbanization of the area has been rapid, largely unplanned, and has had severe impacts on the environment. Cancun, in the northeast of the Yucatan Peninsula, is located in the state of Quintana Roo in Mexico. The city was conceived of by the Mexican government as a high-level tourist destination, and people from all over the country were brought in to work there as laborers for its construction, in food production, and in the tourist industry. Cancun changed from a place of artisanal fishers, tropical forests, and unknown beaches, prior to the 1970s, to become one of the most internationally well-known Mexican tourist destinations today. With a population of more than 526,000, Cancun, in 2009 hosted nearly 3.7 million foreign tourists. San Antonio, Texas has grown to be the seventh largest city in the states, with a current population of approximately 1.4 million. In 1991, the population was approximately 790,000. In the past 20 years it has been the fourth fastest growing city in the United States. On a percentage basis, Las Vegas and Clark County experienced incredibly high growth rates starting in the 1930s and lasting until the late 2000s recession. During that period, the population of the city more than doubled in most decades. The rate slowed down in the 1970s with the decrease of the white birth rate, but never dropped below 60 percent, 1980, 1990, and even accelerated after 1990 due to immigration. By 2000, Las Vegas was the largest city founded in the 20th century, and by 2006 it was the 28th largest city in the U.S. with a population of 552,000 in the city and nearly 1.8 million in Clark County. The rapid development and population growth both halted abruptly in the late 2000s recession. Las Vegas is situated within Clark County in an arid basin on the desert floor, surrounded by dry mountains. Within the city there are many lawns, trees, and other greenery. Due to water resource issues, there is now a movement to encourage xeriscapes. This is an aerial view of Glen Canyon Dam across the Colorado River and Lake Powell in the United States. Downstream the Colorado River does not reach the sea. As the river cuts through the Colorado Plateau, its flow is doubled by the Green River, the largest tributary. Below the confluence, I watch the river enter the first of its desert seas, Lake Powell. Today, the lake is shrinking. The west is in its second decade of drought, and everywhere I look, those hundred-foot bathtub rings reminded me of how much water we once had. Below Lake Powell starts the Grand Canyon. Below the Grand Canyon, 
you reach a dwindling Lake Mead and Hoover Dam. Next to Hoover Dam is Las Vegas. When I was young, I pointed to Vegas like many as the bad boy of the river. When I visited, I found a more complex truth. Las Vegas gets very little water from the Colorado River, so they are forced to use it wisely. The city actually pays people to tear out their front lawns. I saw a house with water-thirsty green grass in the morning turn to desert-friendly shrubs by noon. But not everyone wants to be Vegas. Downstream, the river becomes the border between Arizona and California, and the straws are abundant. I never really knew this part of the river. It is much different than the river I grew up on. It is confined, fractured, and fading. I started seeing the river as an orphan, stretched into a blooming desert, a maze of concrete canals, and a symphony of human thirst. Around the world, agricultural practices have developed as a function of topography, soil type, crop type, annual rainfall, and tradition. In Minnesota, U.S., the very regular grid pattern reflects early 19th century surveying. The size of the fields is a function of mechanization and that dictates a certain efficiency. In Kansas, U.S., center pivot irrigation is responsible for the field pattern. In northwest Germany, the small size and random pattern of fields is a leftover from the Middle Ages. Near Santa Cruz, Bolivia, the pie or radio patterned fields are part of a settlement scheme, at the center of each unit is a small community. Outside of Bangkok, Thailand, rice paddies fed by an extensive network of canals that is hundreds of years old, appear as small skinny rectangular fields and in the Cerrado in southern Brazil, cheap cost of land and its flatness have resulted in enormous farms and large field sizes. Like an image of a woven tapestry, this photograph highlights an extensive pattern of agricultural fields in southeastern Quebec, Canada. The tapestry pattern is due to the fact that the agricultural fields are closely tied to access roads, with rectangular fields extending outwards perpendicular to the roadways. A similar pattern, embedded within a different social, historical, and economic context, can be seen in the Rondonia region of western Brazil. diverse agricultural landscape in the western part of Minas Gerais state in Brazil. Though most widely known for its mineral wealth, Minas Gerais is also a large agricultural producer for Brazil. A mix of regularly gridded polygonal fields and circular center pivot fields marks the human use of the region. These are photographs of the Manigros region in Spain, where generations of farmers have tried to stake out farmland in the gypsum foothills despite an apparent scarcity of water. Dry, chalk-like lines, textured swaths of dirt, and gridded rows of trees reveal what is both a desolate and fertile terrain. Because satellites see a wide area at once, they are ideal tools for monitoring evapotranspiration. This image, based on data collected by the Landsat 5 satellite on August 9, 2006, shows evapotranspiration from vegetation on the Snake River Plain in south-central Idaho. Fields of irrigated crops are dark blue squares or circles, showing that the growing plants are taking up and transpiring water. 
fallow and recently harvested fields are lighter blue. Surviving on the scant drain that falls on the high desert, the surrounding natural scrubland uses far less water. The scrubland, shown in the upper left corner of the image, is tan and pale blue. The diagonal line across the upper right corner of the image is a road. Rice is Asia's most important food crop, grown normally submerged in paddies. The picture shows rice paddies in the mountains close to Manila, Philippines. In Cambodia, for example, 90% of the total agricultural area is used for rice production. Without cultivation, this land would soon be transformed into lush rainforests. The Nile River supplies virtually all water in Egypt. Notice how fields cluster along the river. And major portions in Uganda, Sudan and Ethiopia. The Nile is polluted by sewage and agricultural chemicals, and is failing to supply growing populations along its dry lower stretches with enough water for a good standard of living. With a watershed that includes parts of 11 nations, disputes over the Nile's water could devolve into war. Enormous irrigation projects using fossil water have turned Saudi Arabia into a food exporter. Rich in oil but lacking abundant renewable water resources, Saudi Arabia used oil revenues to develop domestic agriculture based on non-renewable groundwater. Subsidies, direct and indirect, led to astonishing growth in agricultural output. Large center pivot irrigation projects such as the one above at Wadi Sarin appeared in the vast Saudi desert. However, by one calculation the cost of wheat produced reached around 500 US dollars per tonne, several times the cost of imported wheat. In 2008, the Saudi government announced plans to phase out wheat production by 2016. Industrial scale and productive capacity of contemporary greenhouses are impressive in and of themselves. But then there are these unique greenhouse cities that have recently emerged. These odd agglomerations of new standards of engineered efficiency and embedded globalism. Egesio National Park in Argentina was created in 1934 and contains the Egesio Falls, one of the greatest natural beauties of Argentina, surrounded by the subtropical jungle. Across the Egesio River lies its Brazilian counterpart, both declared in 1984 UNESCO World Heritage Sites. In 1973, signs of deforestation are evident but the forest cover is extensive throughout the region. By 2003, the protected national park is sharply defined in the dark green enclave to the right of the images. Santa Cruz comprises around one-third of the total area of Bolivia and 51% of its forested lands. By 2001, approximately 60% of total forest clearing carried out in the country took place here. Historically, forest clearing in Santa Cruz was limited but it has grown exponentially in the last two decades. As recently as 1950 the entire area had less than 60,000 hectares of cultivated land, most of which was corn and rice. Forest clearing slowly accelerated from 1950 to the early 1980s as a result of government policies promoting import substitution of agricultural goods, mainly rice, cotton and sugar cane. The eastern half of Bolivia is covered with tropical rainforest. In the 1990s, Bolivia initiated a large-scale effort to increase the rate of logging and create tracts of land for commercial agriculture, primary soy and sugar cane, but also cocoa, on the Amazon basin side of the Andean highlands. Today, the commercial fields are well established and easily mapped from space as large, rectangular clearings in the forest. The agricultural developments are still growing today. The clearings start off as small rectangles arranged perpendicular to an access road. 
Early clearings take on a herringbone pattern when viewed from above. The intact areas, dark forest, are gradually logged and then cultivated, filling in the pattern to make a larger cleared area. This province sits at the confluence of two different types of forest, the Tucumano Boliviana Rainforest or Yungas, and the Park Chacuano or Dry Coco region, representing more than 50% of the forested land in the country. The advancement of agriculture is one of the primary causes of deforestation in Argentina. In 2006, deforestation in the departments of Anta, San Martin and Aran represented 80% of provincial forest cover loss. Between 1998 and 2002 the province lost 194,389 hectares of forest, an annual rate of deforestation of 0.69% that accelerated between 2002 and 2006, reaching an annual deforestation rate of 1.5%. The Gulf of Fonseca, shared by Nicaragua, Honduras and El Salvador, experienced dramatic expansion of large-scale shrimp production mostly during the 1990s. While the area directly affected by the shrimp ponds was generally salt and mud flats, some areas of adjoining mangrove were converted as well. Highly productive, biodiverse habitats, mangroves are often cleared for shrimp aquaculture. These images show water hyacinth infestation and control of such invasive species. Image in 1995 shows several water hyacinth choke bays, yellow arrows, but in 2001, we can see a visible reduction of water hyacinth on Lake Victoria. Between the two photos taken in 1990 and 2004, you can clearly see the impact of mining on river systems, water pollution due to copper mine, in Papua New Guinea. This controversial copper mine is located at the headwaters of the OKTD River, a tributary of the Fly River, in extremely rough terrain in the rainforest-covered star mountains of Papua New Guinea's western province. Prior to the opening of the mine in 1984, this area was very isolated, sparsely inhabited, and ecologically pristine. The uncontrolled discharge of 70 million tons of waste rock and mine tailings annually has spread more than 1,000 kilometers, 621 miles, down the OKTD and Fla rivers, raising riverbeds and causing flooding, sediment deposition, forest damage, and a serious decline in the area's biodiversity. These photos made available on June 29, 2012, are showing numerous illegally lit fires continuing to rage the peat swamp forest of Tripa, Darul Makma in Indonesia. These satellite images demonstrate the extent of the deforestation in Malaysian Borneo. They reveal the overall extent of land cover change throughout the region. This image has a resolution of 30 meters per pixel. Spanning about 22,000 meters, it shows the difference between plantation and intact forest in part of Malaysian Borneo. Satellite images show that enormous areas of Amazon rainforest were cleared, mostly along an arc of deforestation on the southern boundary of the Amazon basin. The Brazilian states of Rondônia, Pará, and Mato Grosso saw the largest losses. Major roads such as the BR-163 running from north to south across the 1985 image of Mato Grosso provided access to the forest. Twenty years later much of the forest is gone, replaced by soy fields and cattle pastures. Severe droughts in 2005 and 2010 increased the frequency of fire, and have reinforced concerns that the Amazon is reaching a tipping point where large areas of forest could be replaced by a more savanna-like ecosystem. These are photos of the area around the Jamari River in Rondonia, Brazil in 1984, shortly after construction of the hydroelectric dam began, and in 2011, 
the reservoir flooded the upstream forest and displaced many people. Also evident in the images is the deforestation that has affected much of the region. The Belo Monte Dam is a hydroelectric dam complex under construction on the Xing River in the state of Para, Brazil. The planned installed capacity of the dam complex would be 11,233 megawatts. There has been opposition among the international community to the project's potential construction regarding its economic viability, the generation efficiency of the dams and impacts on the region's people and environment. On April 12, 2012, Greenpeace flew over the region of Altanera to record in pictures, the construction sites of Belo Monte and its impacts on the forest, river and city. In 29 August 2005 there were over 50 failures of the levees and flood walls protecting New Orleans, Louisiana, and its suburbs following passage of Hurricane Katrina and landfall in Mississippi. The levee and flood wall failures caused flooding in 80% of New Orleans and all of St. Bernard Parish. Tens of billions of gallons of water spilled into vast areas of New Orleans, flooding over 100,000 homes and businesses. Images before and after the Japanese earthquake and Sunmi March 2011, showing the city of Samoa and the surrounding region, badly affected by the Sunmi. The Athabasca oil sands region of Alberta, Canada forms the second largest deposit of recoverable oil in the world after Saudi Arabia. The energy and environmental costs of recovering the low quality oil, however, limited its development for decades. As the price of oil has risen there has been a rush to exploit the deposits lying under parts of Canada's boreal forests. This image pair, the bright footprint of the strip mined areas has expanded dramatically into the forest since 1992. An estimated 40,000 million US dollar was invested in 2010 alone. The mines follow the course of the Athabasca River, the dark brown ribbon of water that runs down the center of the image. The river is essential to the operation. Over the course of its very long lifetime, the river has eroded through the sediment that once covered the oil deposit, gradually bringing it close to the surface.
The Deepwater Horizon drilling rig explosion refers to the April 20, 2010 explosion and subsequent fire on the Deepwater Horizon semi-submersible mobile offshore drilling unit, which was owned and operated by Transocean and drilling for BP in the Macondo Prospect oil field about 40 miles 60 kilometers, southeast of the Louisiana coast. The explosion killed 11 workers and injured 16 others. Another 99 people survived without serious physical injury. It caused the deep water horizon to burn and sink, and started a massive offshore oil spill in the Gulf of Mexico. This environmental disaster is now considered one of the largest in US history. This is a photo from Ed Bertinsky's photography series Oil. This land, let alone the thousands of other oil sites, has been pillaged of its natural resource, leaving behind a barren desert of oil pumps. This is Kevin Carter's Pulitzer Surprise winning photo taken in 1994 during the Sudan famine. The picture depicts a famine-stricken child being stalked by a vulture. The child is crawling towards a United Nations food camp, located a kilometer away. No one knows what happened to the child, including the photographer who left the scene as the photo was taken. He later confided to friends that he wished he had intervened. Journalists we warned never to touch famine victims for fear of disease. Three months later, and only weeks after bestowed with the Pulitzer Prize, Kevin Carter committed suicide.